Hi, my name is Vince Harkowitz, and I'm the COO and Head of Product at Gronetics. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the five new technologies revolutionizing indoor agriculture. This will be a broad survey of different technologies increasing efficiency and reducing costs uh, in indoor farms, whether that be greenhouses, hybrid facilities, or indoor facilities. To give you a little background on myself, I'm uh, the co-founder and head of product at Gronetics. Um, Gronetics is the operating system for indoor agriculture. We've built a uh, high resolution crop sensing platform, a full automation system, and custom workflow and task management software, as well as a plant tracking system that all works together in one platform to help you optimize your facility, optimize your operations, and increase your quality and yield. But this presentation is not about Gronetics. I'm going to cover some of the technologies we're seeing that are going to revolutionize how plants are grown indoors. This will be the technology of the future. This will be like the next.com next era, except thankfully this is built on real value, growing food for people, growing medicine for people. So the five technologies of the future that are here today that are going to allow us to do this is number one, advanced lighting technology like hybrid lighting solutions by CCV Research, um, new sensor platforms, uh, and with that of course comes a whole lot of data that we need to manage and process and correlate. Number three is vertical systems. Uh, we'll cover sub 12 foot systems as well as multi-story systems here. Uh, number four is total automation, so this will be automated logistics and tray movement. This will be key to how you get clean room cultivation at scale. And then lastly, greenhouse robotics, which ties together all the other technologies uh, and a lot of the most advanced technologies uh, that are around today into novel automation solutions. So number one, this is advanced and efficient lighting. Lighting technology has taken leaps and bounds in recent years with LED and efficient double-ended lighting. Uh, what used to be thought to be very inefficient, new technologies have come around and transformed HPS into also a very efficient uh, new lighting system. Now, I'm going to talk to you about hybrid lighting solutions which bring the natural sunlight indoors while keeping the heat out that take this whole lighting system a generation forward. Okay, we're looking at 90% efficiency gains over traditional HPS just by bringing the natural sunlight inside. It's a no-brainer. This is why greenhouse production is the norm all over the world. Um, and so we need to use the natural light uh, in hybrid environments. Now, there are some challenges with traditional greenhouse cultivation, one of them being tight climate controls. And so this is a novel way to use the sun and use the light um, get all that full spectral profile that the plants love so much um, to increase their flavor and quality uh, you know while taking advantage of those massive efficiency gains by using the free light that's out there now I have this uh, data point on here we've seen over 40 percent efficiency gains over LED alone as well so LED is great but still you need a lot of light if you're growing indoors and um, only by bringing the natural sunlight in are you able to reduce those even more dramatically those costs now uh, the second type of light I want to talk about or system I want to talk about is spectral controlled LEDs now this is probably the most efficient lighting technology you can get to. You are only, if you are controlling the spectral profile of the light, not only are you dimming the light as a whole to reduce energy use when the plant's small, but you can also dim or turn off completely certain color profiles, certain colors in the light. So for example, far red is a good light um, for the flowering period. You, it tricks the light into thinking it's fall. Um, it needs to produce, reproduce and will try to produce flowers. And you don't need this light on in the vegetative period. Now, granted, more research needs to be done, but uh, you know you can have a lot of efficiency gains from having that light, that, uh, that particular channel off for the majority of the plant's life and then kick it on for a few hours a day you know, um, at the end of the plant's life. 
and this will allow you to get maximum efficiency gains. Now I also want to have a special mention here for liquid cooled LEDs which I think is fascinating because you're able to move the heat energy away from the lights and put it where you need it and this may be you know valuable in regulating environment in greenhouses to tighten up those environmental um, environmental ranges. Now technology number two is research grade sensors and big data. Now we said earlier how there's a lack of data in this space right now but thankfully due to open hardware the cost of individual sensors is dropping dramatically. Um, it's very cheap to produce these PCBs in China now. Um, what used to be very hard to get, you need to go through a big company to buy, now you can buy online for dirt cheap. So high quality affordable sensors are going to become the norm. One of the most advanced and interesting sensors I want to talk about is this uh, handheld uh, spectroscopy device by Consumer Physics. And this little thing is app enabled, connects to your phone, and will allow you to actually look at nutrient content of plants uh, without hurting the plant in situ. So um, it's technologies like this which are becoming affordable and democratized by people who are passionate and giving back. And, um, and you know, really these kind of solutions are only going to come down in cost if we do uh, production in these ways. Now, of course, with all this data, you have a problem. How do you actually correlate it to individual plants and batches and people and workflows? Well, that's where Gronetics comes in. Now, we're the only platform in the world that is an open system that will let you take in any sensor data, any energy data, any controls data, and link and tasks and workflows of people and link that all together to make sense of it to help you optimize every single harvest. Now technology number three is vertical grow systems. These are a proven method for optimizing and maximizing output. Now uh, I have in this picture a sub 12 foot system. Uh, this is a system developed by a really brilliant uh, ag tech entrepreneur called Nate Story. Uh, he did a, his PhD thesis on the design of these towers and what he proved was while the individual plant size was a bit smaller by using all three dimensions of light the actual output of per square foot was much much higher and this is kind of obvious when you look at it but um, he actually did the research uh, his platform is taking off and I really um, wish to see more great innovative solutions like this one of the really brilliant parts of his system is that he also designed the actual workflow and plant management tasks into his product design as well. So uh, very easy to move these racks, they're on garment rack type wheels. So you can manage and maintain the environment very easily. You can see in this picture here he's using supplemental lighting, uh, which isn't mandatory but is you know possible as well. Um, and yeah, very efficient, very easy to use system that's getting a lot of traction and attention. Now, the other kind of vertical systems are uh, the advanced multi-story systems. And this will absolutely be the way that crops are grown at scale in the future. Okay, and obviously already today in some places. On the left here, you can see a water wheel based automated system that sends the tracks of plants, the racks of plants rather, um, in a circle up and down that A-frame, giving them a nice varied exposure to the sun, uh, moving them through the different climate zones in the tall greenhouse, and just giving the plant an all around much more realistic and, and uh, consistent environment. Now, uh, Obviously, you can see here the amount of multiplied square foot efficiency you're getting is, you know, 20x because of the amount of plants you can have stacked on top of one another. And the example on the left deals with logistics as well because um, the system on the right that you see, which is essentially just a stacked uh, bunk, you know, you know, quintuple bunk bed kind of system, 
you're going to need to be up on a cherry picker for something like that. And, you know, you have to do your own calculations if it makes sense for your, you know, labor and cost of that equipment. But, um, you know, turns out it is more efficient still, even with the cherry picker. Um, but yeah, vertical logistics are different. They're a little bit harder, so that those will have to be considered with operations. Um, but again, more solutions are needed in this space. Now this is probably one of the most exciting technologies that I've come across in a long time. And uh, the system on the left that you see here is a automated bench system. So it essentially takes a rolling bench and allows it to be sent anywhere in a massive facility through a system of drivers and shuttles. And it allows you to have large scale clean room cultivation uh, you know, dramatically reducing your labor costs because why do you need people running around everywhere if you can have a very efficient electric motor move the plants to you down a rolling track? You know, we have the technology, people. This is not advanced. <laughs> um, we should be seeing these systems deployed much more broadly. Um, and then uh, taking it to the next level, we have the green cube system on the right here. And this system is really fascinating because now you're taking the advantage of the 2D system and vertical systems, deploying automation at scale, and you get a massive amount of efficiency and density uh, in this design. So really a fascinating, um, a fascinating company to watch here. Now, to continue that conversation from um, automated logistics, let's talk about greenhouse robotics. Um, this is a very fascinating space as well, and one that's poised to really transform how we grow plants indoors. As you can see from the top right, whether you're just trying to move pots around or uh, do inspections on large uh, indoor grow facilities with consumer plant products like you see in the picture you know you have a robot here that's small and efficient it's good at what it does and they have a little swarm technology so they work together to do their job and um, you know they're meticulous uh, their mapping system makes perfect grids and uh, allows you to remove a ton of labor right labor that's menial that nobody wants to do anyway breaking your back labor Right? Let the growers grow the best plants and give technology the boring jobs. Right? And so these are some companies that are really trying to do that. Um, like I mentioned, the top right is Harvest Automation. The bottom left is a French technology company called uh, NAOI Technologies. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Um, but they have an automatic harvesting robot. Uh, again, uh, taking the uh, more challenging, repetitive tasks and giving it to a machine and oftentimes with a human there to help, right? So human-assisted robotics. And it lets one person do the job of many. And that's what we really need if we're going to scale up these, these uh, designs. Because running many people in an indoor farm is not a good idea. You're going to have a lot of contamination, um, a lot of wasted crossover time, and it's not going to be easy to optimize. So really what you want is... Um, people with a passion for cultivation, uh, a tight team working closely with systems engineers to optimize facilities, um, to really look at how you can reduce the costs and automate as much as possible. Uh, the Priva Comapano is really interesting as well. Uh, it has a machine vision system that allows it to do precision defoliation. So trimming the leaves, again, a meticulous task that normally a human has to do. Um, at the same time, it probably can do all kinds of analytics and check the amount of tomatoes that you have, right? And give you data, qualified data, straight into your database to make those decisions on how big is my next harvest going to be? How much can I pre-sell? Things like that. Now to conclude uh, with some predictions and... Uh, uh, some comments and a question I'm going to leave you with. We have schools like MIT, Berkeley, Columbia, uh, ASU, all these great schools putting lots of effort into developing great educational programs on smart farming, on urban farming, uh, and on smart cities. And so with that, we're going to see a ton of rapid innovation in the next five years. 
Um, I think it's one of the most interesting spaces. I think a lot of people are very passionate about it, passionate about taking their expertise and bringing it into this field. Um, we're going to see much larger and more advanced indoor facilities. Um, you can see from the presentation today that technologies already exist and are being deployed at scale. And so that's where you really reap the reward of the automation and efficiency. Um, there is a little bit higher upfront cost in the beginning, but when you have the ability to scale up with some of these systems, it really transforms your operation into uh, a new business. Um, there will be hyper-efficient urban farms in top-tier cities. So, uh, like I said earlier, unfortunately, top-tier cities are where there is the most pollution, and so we're going to need to have these kind of solutions near cities. Uh, people are passionate about clean food. People are passionate about what they eat, and uh, you can see from the price of you know your local organic produce just how profitable it can be as well. Um, so I'm going to leave you with one final question. Do you think this is going to be a centralized uh, uh, economy where we're going to have massive urban farms outside of cities like the one in New Jersey? Or is it going to be a distributed one? Maybe both. But I leave that for you to think about in terms of designing your future farms and systems. Again, thanks for staying and watching this presentation. If you'd like to get in touch with us at Gronetics, you can contact us at hello at gronetics.co and Gronetics is spelt G-R-O-W-N-E-T-I-C-S dot C-O not dot com. Our phone number is 1-844-476-9638. Again, thank you very much for listening to the presentation. I hope to hear from you soon.